at this point, the interviewer stands up. He's amazed. He shakes your hand and tells you, you you've got the job. You've done it. Or more than likely, there are three judges in the court who have the following probabilities of reaching the correct verdict on a criminal. And these are shown below. A verdict can only be decided based on a majority decision. That is to say, at least two of the judges agree on a verdict. So what is the probability of the court reaching the correct verdict? Now, to reach a correct verdict for a majority decision, this would mean that at least two of the judges must agree, that is to say, have the same verdict, and there's only two ways this can occur. Either two out of the three judges agree, or all three, the three out of three of the, of the judges agree. Mathematically speaking, the probability of getting the correct verdict is simply just the probability of two out of three judges reaching the correct verdict, or all three judges reaching the correct verdict. And this is simply just the union of these two events. Now, because these two events are mutually exclusive, therefore, the probability of mutually exclusive events is simply just the sum of the probabilities of these individual events. So it is the sum of the probabilities of two other three judges reaching the correct verdict, plus the probability of all three judges reaching the correct verdict. As you know, at this point, I like to write out all the probabilities that can be gleaned from the details of the question. So shown in the table, we have the probabilities of the judges getting the correct verdict as described in the question above. So let's try to get the probabilities of getting an incorrect verdict. And for judge one, judge two, judge three, it is simply just one minus their probabilities of getting the correct verdict simply by the laws of total probability. And therefore we get one minus P for both judges one and two and 0 0.5 for judge three. Moving that out of the way, we can try to find our probability of getting the correct verdict. So, because this left term here is, it is a little bit more complicated, let's just focus on this easier term right here, the probability of all three judges reaching the correct verdict. Now, the probability of all three of them reaching the correct verdict is just the probability of judge one getting correct and judge two getting correct and judge three getting correct. And because these are independent events, independent meaning that these probabilities are not influenced by one another. They are simply, you know, static. You know, judge two making the um, correct prediction or the correct verdict does not influence the probability that judge one makes the correct verdict. And similarly for the rest, hence they are independent events. And the probability of the intersection of independent events is simply just the product of the probabilities of these individual events. Therefore, we can do the following. Plugging in the values from the table above, it's p times p times 0 0.5, which gives us 0 0.5 p squared. <sighs> Look, I get it. Preparing for quant interviews is tiring. Doing hours of practice questions, grinding away. So why not take a break after this question to learn about the alpha models of the quant trading system by following the link above. Now back to the question. So we have our right term all sorted out as 0 0.5 p squared. Let's try to work on our last left term over here. The probability of two out of three judges reaching the correct verdict. So what, is, so what is this equal to? So the probability of two out of three judges reaching the correct verdict. How many ways can we get two out of three judges reaching the correct verdict? So let's start off with just one case, right? We can have judge one and judge two getting the correct verdict and judge three getting the incorrect verdict. But we can also get judge one and judge three getting the correct verdict and judge two getting the incorrect verdict. We can also get judge two and three getting the incorrect, getting the correct verdict and finally judge one getting the, getting the incorrect verdict. And is this all the ways that we can get it? Yes, because if, if you think about it, there's only sort of two camps that we can sort these judges into, correct or incorrect. And on the incorrect verdict, we have all cases where each judge appears in the incorrect verdict. So we have judge three getting the incorrect verdict, judge two, judge one, and, that, and that's it. You know, there's no other um, combination, right? So this is just a great way to just write it out just to make sure you understand all the various combinations. And mathematically, what we're trying to do, we're, we're trying to say, how many ways can we get two out of three? So the number of ways is just three choose two. And by the formula for combinations, listed above, we get the following, which is just three, which does agree with the number of situations that we have just described here. 
So let's try to answer the so let's try to calculate this uh, probability of two out of three judges reaching the correct verdict. So relabeling each situation as S1, S2, S3 to make the syntax a bit clearer. The prob this probability is simply just a probability of situation one, union with situation two, union with, union with situation three. So S1 or S2 or S3, the, prob this, the probability of the union of these events will be the value for this missing probability. And once again, because these are mutually exclusive events, that is to say they can't occur together, because if you can imagine, there's never a situation where judge three, let's say, let, let's say if we want if we want S1 and S2 to occur together, this is just simply impossible because judge three can't make the incorrect verdict while simultaneously making the correct verdict as well. So these these two situations can never occur together. So this is impossible, right? Therefore they are mutually exclusive events. And therefore, the probability of their union is simply just the sum of the probabilities of these individual events. Hence, let's think about the probability of S1, S2, and S3. So for S1, it's judge 1 and judge 2 making the correct verdict, and judge 3 making the incorrect one. So it's P, and P is 0 0.5. And filling in the values from the other situations, we get the following. Minus 0 0.5 P squared plus P. And finally, we have all our missing pieces. So the probability of getting the correct verdict is minus 0 0.5 p squared plus p plus 0 0.5 p squared, which gives us just p. Yep, just, <laughs> just p. All that for just p. Now, at this point, the interviewer stands up. He's amazed. He shakes your hand and tells you, you you've got the job. You've done it. Or more than likely, the interviewer is just warming up and you have another five or six of these thrown at you with increasing levels of difficulty, and you might leave the interview crying. If you don't want that to happen, click this link on the left for a playlist of other interview questions to help you prepare, and click the link on the right to learn about my recent interview experience so you're well prepared for what's ahead of you. And if you're looking to get a uh, head start on applications, watch this video above to learn about this one quant fund in London that stood out for its application process, and get a link to my Excel list of 190 firms. And finally, finally, to stay up to date with more questions, like and subscribe. Thank you.